and I love the gravelly, harsh voice of Lady Gaga. <laughs> no, Bradley Cooper. It is fast becoming evident that the weather here is so changeable. From 12 hours to the next, I feel like that's your kind of window where it's fairly accurate because at the beginning of the week I was looking at whether every day was going to be windy and rainy and overcast and and every day has been I suppose that but not all day for a couple of hours uh, the wind comes and goes the cloud cover comes and goes um, in fact actually it's it only rained a little bit the day I was here hmm but there we go. Um, so this this evening, we've got about an hour and a half till sunset. Uh, and what I've been doing, I've kind of um, been keeping myself to um, there's three or four islands um, where I am that uh, that I can get to without paying anything. If I want to go back towards um, Estroy which is the next island towards um, the capital if I want to head that way I have to go through a subsea tunnel which costs like £10 a, a go and I, I thought there's no point heading that way if I'm going there tomorrow anyway because I'm changing Airbnbs what I'll do I just for these three days that I'm in this place just stick to this side of the, the toll tunnel so where I'm going to go is, I've got my map down here, that's why I'm looking down here. I'm going to go to Vidoy, which is like the nor most northeastern kind of island that you can drive to without getting the ferry. Uh, and let me show you what I'm thinking. I've come down here. We are around here in Depil, and we can merely drive over here to Vidoy. And um, this bit here is a tunnel. I'm going to drive around to this side here because you get, it opens up and you get a really nice view looking down here, this way, towards um, this mountain here. And it, it's so you've got this mountain here, but this side of it goes up and it, it's just like a sheer drop into the sea. And, and from here, looking this way, you can really see this weird kind of mountain going up and then just it's like it's been cut in half like someone's cut a cake and it just drops and so it creates a this this part of the island is just a really odd interesting shape plus we got the uh the sun sun's coming down from this side so the light's going to come this way and light up the whole side here um so if i set up around here somewhere get looking down um down towards it getting the sea in, getting these cliffs in, and then the sun coming this way, lighting up the side of the mountain there. That would uh, be an interesting photo. So that's that's the plan. Ooh, just packing up, getting ready. Really annoying, this, um, so I've got, as I mentioned in another video, I've brought two hard drives with me, SSD, which works fine perfectly. But the hard drive, uh, like the mechanical hard drive, I've got a two terabyte one. It's performing so slowly, and um, I mean, I only bought it a month ago, and um, I'm having to do like repairs and uh, data frag refragmentation or whatever it's called, and um, I'm just transferring some data over it to back up, and uh, it's running at 20, 20 megabits per second which is painfully slow yeah so uh, that's gonna whir away when I'm gone so I'll have backed up data while I'm out yeah but um, I'm out of this place tomorrow I really enjoyed it it's a really cute little place it's just perfect for one or two people if you got more then it will be very crowded in here so yeah entire bedroom eight guests I don't know if you can see that Eight guests, six beds. Well, it's a small double, the one I'm sleeping on. And you've got two small singles, 
this side and then you've got that pull out sofa which would be a double I guess so that's six beds so I don't know where the other two <laughs> two guests stay there's no way they're sleeping on these um, benches no way I mean you could sleep on the floor there or it, there is space up there to sleep more unless they got more mattresses I don't know it, uh, uh, they're not part of the EU the Fair Islands so certain things um, <laughs> you can get away with I mean if you're one or two people and want to stay here perfect works really nicely but any more than that uh, four definitely no more than four if you've got a family two adults two kids yeah but um, definitely no more than four uh, right I better get going <laughs> I need to find somewhere to park and and kind of the vantage point I need mm, it's a good coffee machine as well I'd just like to take a moment to point out this just how crazy the landscape is over here we've got the island of Fugloy which is just a tiny island but it's just like you drive out there through the tunnel and you see this thing across the water and you're like blimey that is something else <laughs> so yeah <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's more of that for me to discover as my time here continues but just driving around this place is pretty amazing let alone some of the hiking you can do hmm. just sh this the, it's just the wind though you can hear it you can hear it whistling and shaking the car that's what we're fighting against also I, I just driven slightly down just I'm just driven down a random road just to see what's happening and you can start to see this uh, side of the mountain that, with a sea cliff uh, start to appear. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> uh, that's what I want to photograph tonight. Um, yeah, <laughs> crazy, isn't it? And over there is a tunnel entrance. I assume it must be cheaper for them to build tunnels um, than like excavate roads on the side of uh, these mountains um, because they've just got tunnels everywhere. But it's like it's like they love tunnels. <laughs> but I was wrong. It's not a single track tunnel. It's a really nice, roomy, double track, double uh, laned um, tunnel that's nicely lit. See the thi uh, thing I forgot to mention about these um, single lane tunnels is they're not lit. <laughs> Literally it's a dark unlit tunnel with a that's wide barely wide enough <coughs> for the cars and I'm sure you won't be able to get lorries through. It'd have to be a very small lorry, very small like a van more than a lorry and uh, yeah you just have to pull over at the end something else something else anyway I digress let's let's head onwards to take photos <laughs> when you think you've unlocked it and you've locked it um, found a great composition um, parked up on this kind of a lay-by thing here although you've got to be super careful because there's a little bit of a drop off the road onto this and the last thing I want to do is like damage the sump or something on this on this little car because it's got very little ground clearance but anyway so that's my subject but uh, if I had to go this way I don't know if you can see but it looks like we're on the edge of something and uh, we are to a degree drops down and then there's a little 10 20 second walk and then you actually hit the cliff edge and um, because the wind is coming from a north, no, south easterly kind of direction, and we're on the northeast of the island here, 
Um, it's actually quite sheltered and there's no way if it was windy I would be going down there because it's it's not super dangerous but you just got to be uh, aware and careful because you know I don't want to drop into the sea especially it's going to be super cold choppy when it's like just, you just don't want to do it but anyway it gives me an amazing view I see some waterfalls coming off the edge kind of the cliff pops out and then back in again before it hits uh, over here uh, so yeah um, but sunset is another three quarters of an hour uh, there's no point setting up just yet because I'll just be standing in the cold so I'm going to give it 20 minutes and then head down but in the meantime I'm going to rock out to uh, the soundtrack to A Star Is Born <laughs> I watched it on the plane and enjoyed it very much and I love the gravelly harsh voice of Lady Gaga <laughs> no Bradley Cooper Right, it's half six. It gives us about 25 minutes before sunset. Um, I'm quite hopeful about this. Uh, as you can notice, there's very little wind where I am, but <laughs> that's, you know, you don't want to fall down there. So I've got to find a spot that is safe but I can get the views that I want, which is this. Got that main waterfall there, a little other little one, we've got birds flying around, we've got these rocks coming out, creating a nice line that's kind of weaving in and out before we hit that, I want to call it a pudding bowl. Pudding bowl of a mountain. And um, cloud-wise, um, very little low cloud, no medium cloud. Uh, we have high cloud, but it's very, uh, it's not thick, it's very thin cloud, so I'm hoping that that means that we're going to get some nice colours in the sky reflecting off the bottom of them high clouds, really adding to the scene, so uh, yeah, I'm going to set up, but safely. Now we're definitely definitely not using the wide angle lens. One of the handy things using um, the photography apps is you can put in the lens the field of view you want and uh, you know can tell you 15 mil is way too wide. I was thinking probably 35 mil will do us because I'm interested in really just the width of this pudding bowl mountain um, and 35 mil will give us that field of view in theory so that means I'm putting on the 24 to 105 Sigma lens with the Sigma MC11 adapter because it's a Canon mount lens and the good thing about using Canon stuff it's, it's so much cheaper <laughs> to buy um, will I do a long exposure? Maybe, I'll take that I'm doing all this now because I don't, don't want to hang the bag on the tripod and then I have to get something else out. Yeah, that's everything I need, in theory. Uh, put that down there, I'm going to put the tripod on, then put the bag on. I do need the tripod to be high so I can look down and on the cliff face here. but I'm gonna spread the legs. Definitely don't want anything going over this cliff. Right, that feels secure. I'm in two 
two minds whether I should continue on. It's the gusts that's a problem, the normal wind's fine. It's these gusts. Take a test shot. Nicely in focus, but I'm just gonna swing. Oh, it's wide in the field of view actually. Getting the wind spraying the water up at me now. It's getting that composition I'm having trouble with. Just minute movements is making a massive difference. I finally settled on a um, composition that I feel works. I think it's going to need to be a 4x5 kind of crop on it because I've got the, this cliff edge near me coming into the frame and I think that kind of detracts and I want it to start just before the waterfall coming out, back in and then out again to the pudding bowl. And I've basically got, because I'm in portrait, I've only got this for right two-thirds of the pudding bowl in shot I feel that's uh, any more and I'm kind of getting all this land this uh, near me in the foreground and I think that just detracts from the image so just concentrate on what really uh, makes a nice image take out stuff that doesn't <laughs> uh, yeah so sky starting to get a bit of color in it the wind's calmed down. I've actually brought this down a bit lower as well, which helps. Manually focused F8. Um, I don't need... I don't need a graduated filter. We're all the dynamic ranges within uh, the histogram. Uh, I've been using Zebra on the um, camera again late, lately. I went for a long period of not using it. So um, Zebra, if you've not used it before, it's basically them black and white lines that kind of squiggle around and they indicate what area within the uh, frame is blown out or, you know, the highlights are too strong for the, for the sensor to, to recover. So... I'm a stop down uh, from what the camera says I should be at, but I know, especially with the A7R2 and the A7R3, you can recover a massive amount of shadows, and to be honest, there's not really much shadows anyway, so uh, that's at ISO 50 F8, we're currently at one fifth of a second, uh, don't need any filters, do I want a polarizer. Well, sun's coming down there. I feel a polarizer would benefit me. So it turns out when I dropped this the other day, I got the tiniest little dent or imperfect scratch. And so far, from what I've seen from the images I took last night, I can't. It doesn't seem to affect anything. So I might have got away with it. Because it's towards it's towards the edge of the uh, polarizer. So it might be that it's just out of field of view. Oh that's ma that's making a difference. 
getting rid of a lot of reflection reflect reflection reflections so I can uh, slow down my shutter speed a bit more to an eighth of a second let's do a test shot two second timer boom one thing I forget that the a7r3 can do that the a7r2 can't is uh, I can zoom in with the touch screen and move it around oh by the way I'm about 40 mil focal length Let's take another shot I feel it could have been a bit sharper that last one so I've just re recalibrated the manual focus oh actually some water sprayed up earlier let's check the lens is uh, lens is clean <laughs> it might help a little bit of spray I'm enjoying the rawness of this country. Starting to get some nice colour in the sky over there. The polarizer can really help bring down some of the highlights. Yeah, there we go, that's better. Right. All six stops of light. Defiance help us. We're currently at one second. One minute, four seconds. I can do that. Put it into bulb mode. The uh, the sun didn't light up the inside of that pudding bowl as I was hoping but then again uh, it's got a lot of high cloud to get through so that might have been why oh that's nice and blurry Let's tighten everything up and redo that problem with using a heavier longer lens with a filter attached to the end in the wind like that's probably messed it up. I'm going to have to aim for like 30 second exposures, I think. It's like the middle ground of freezing the water and... Uh, I mean, the, the sea isn't that volatile, so it shouldn't, 30 seconds should do enough. So I'll give it one more go. Oh, time's out. Yes. <laughs> nice and blurry. This time I'm going to stand in the way of it. What colour there is in the sky is fading quickly as well. Oh, not my day is it? Right, I'm going to do something crazy. Turn the... Uh... Oh, is this slipping down? I was wondering why it was going wrong. Might not be the wind at all, I think it's just slipping. Yeah, it's slipping down. Just want to take a photo. This is why having a good tripod and ball head makes a difference. No, right, let's give up. I give up with that. What I will do before the light completely fades is change. Right. <laughs> that was so much faffing around for a picture that I should have got in the first place. <laughs> Deary me. I wonder if I can stretch, get some kind of long, it's 10 seconds. Let's see if I can stretch it for 10 seconds, eh? Although I'm gonna do that by uh, 
pushing the uh, F16 gives me 10 seconds. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is got the right right amount of uh, long exposure there just to smooth out everything. See if I can push it that little bit further. 15 seconds. F20. We're probably bringing in diffraction into the picture now, but we're just bonus shooting now. Well, there's still a remnant of colour in the sky. There we go. It can be done. <laughs> That's going to be it, I think. That's going to be it. All right. So I consider consider this evening a uh, semi-success. Uh, having such a great composition really helps when the light isn't great. It wasn't bad light, it wasn't bad scene. Likewise, I know it could always be better, but uh, a cracking composition just to, just to uh, play with. Uh, ah, I've got to get up this hill. 